songs tonight for you. Oh, 
I want those girls to sing that song. See, the way the devil works is he tries to rob us of our gifts and our talents. He tries to tell us that we can't. But God always says that we can. And when I hear those girls sing the way they just sang, it sounded like angels to me. So, thank you for doing it. Thank you. I'm going to play a presentation for Pastor Isaac. Which am I looking for, Pastor?
Through preaching of the gospel, Preacher Life Ministry has transformed the once forgotten community of the Lewis of Aleppo on its track to finding the purpose as to why God created them.
started also a clinic, built a clinic that has been in operation since 2005. The health element of the community is also a passion that the organization chases. With the infrastructure still budding and looking promising, the people find solace in the institution. There are several moments when the institution has had to volunteer to meet the needs of the people. Future Life Community Dispensary is working under Future Life Tabernacle, a faith-based organization. We serve clients from different orientations. We are serving uh, people who come from very far, some come from near, the farthest about five miles. And we are giving our services to both men and women, old and young. Also, we are taking care of children who sometimes come to our clinic with infections like diarrhea, malaria, majorly with severe conditions. Some come when they are malnourished and we have to give them even the nutritional support. We also take care of pregnant mothers. We are glad we blessed the Lord for the first time we had our first delivery. Though it was hectic because we did it in a room that was not meant for delivery, but the Lord blessed us and we were able to have the bouncing baby, our first bouncing baby for the clinic, a baby boy. And we thank God for that. We also take care of clients who come as well as they come, some are able to pay, some are not able to pay, but we are not denying anybody treatment simply because they cannot pay. So what we do, we wherever those who cannot pay and we allow those who can pay in bits and bits so that we may be able to maintain the stock of our drugs. And we, as we are taking care of them, all around Future Life have given services as an outpatient, but I need came when we needed to have work because some of our patients were very sick and they come from very far, so making them go back home was a problem. So we saw a mission and a need to bring up a wall, which we have built up to the walls. We still need to do the roofs, the ceiling. We have not done the floor, we have not done the furnishing, the windows are not yet done. But we trust the Lord. With God, all things are possible. So we come to you, we need your support. You can support us financially, you can support by donating to us material. We require electronic microscope, we require data scope, we require beddings, mattresses, bed sheets, the beds itself, we require grip stand, autoclave, we require urinals, feeding trolleys, we require drug trolleys, we require uh, bed pans and urinals, we require even containers and even stretcher, we require wheelchair. And uh, I know God is going to bless us together as we serve them, as we serve him. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.
I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to close that. How's that? I'm going to turn that off. Robert, let's just go ahead and shut these screens down. We've done all this we need to do. Guys, if you can see, what is going on in Siaya, Kenya, Africa. You can understand that by supporting these people, these people that you haven't met yet, why I have been involved with them for as long as I have. One of the pictures that was over Dr. Isaac's head while he was sitting at his desk was with him with a red stole and he was standing in front of one white column with a glass window and I recognized that building that was City Gate Church in Chattanooga when he received his degree from my father. So now he comes to City Gate, Gallatin. Would you guys please make welcome Pastor Isaac Obure and his wife, Miss Angel. something I want just to give my wife a chance to greet you and then I will share with you something that the Lord has laid in my hands. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord brothers and sisters. Amen. I greet you in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity just to share with you the glory that he has for us and the love. I'm so grateful for you just sitting and allowing us to speak into your life. I want to tell you that you are part of what you've just seen. I want to believe you've been praying for us and we've also been praying for you. And I call on a continuation that you continue to pray for us and we will also continue to pray for you. This evening I bring you greetings from home, our prayer partners, the intercessors that are where we are here. God bless us together. Thank you. Amen. I've known Dr. Howie Cantrell for many, many years since I came to the stage for the first time. God connected me with his dad, and we have been family friends. And through this family, God has done a lot because. The first time I met his dad, he spoke into my life and all that he said, I've seen God do. And so I'm here to join you as a family and I'm here also to share with you and to give you a testimony of God and what God has done. And uh, I want to encourage you to pray for us, for what we are doing back in Kenya and also to invite you as a team to come and be part of what God is doing. You are here, you are a professional, you are a teacher, you are a doctor, you are a medical, a person. Please pray about it and let us know when God has laid in your heart to come and be with us. We'll be glad to have you to be a blessing to us. You know, Jesus commanded the church to go into all the world, commanded us to go into all the world to preach the gospel. You may not reach Africa, but when you pray for us, God uses us to lead so many to Christ, you shall have reached Africa. We do a lot of training for pastors, and we send them out, and God has enabled us to plant several churches. And now we have, we have started planting churches across the border of Kenya. We planted a church in Tanzania, and I'm, we are working on planting a church also in Rwanda in the, in the year coming, in February. So keep us in your prayers, and I know that God will bless us together. And uh, if you are listening in our clinic, we 
need a lot of equipment. And if you have anybody who can donate for us some of those things, we'll be glad to have them in organizing how to ship them back to Kenya. We have a, a man who I met last year and he said he would help us do that. So we would be glad to uh, receive whatever God has put in your hand or any equipment that you can donate and pray for our school. Most of, some of these kids are orphans. They come from poor families. Some of them are HIV positive. In our clinic, there has what we call in Kenya a patient support center where they come to get their supply of ARVs every month. They take the ARVs to boost their immune system. And the food that we give them in the school, the breakfast and the lunch, that's basically what some of them get in a day during the school day. So we ask for your prayers on that. So thank you so much. Thank you once again, my brother, for allowing me to come. Now, when I preach in Africa, we always say hallelujah, and people respond by saying amen. So I ask you to preach with me and also to respond, participate with me as we preach the word. Go with me to the book of uh, uh, Exodus chapter number 33. I want, us to sh I want to share with you something that God has laid in my heart, heart that I've been sharing to encourage believers and to see the power of God and to know who God is in our lives so that we live a victorious life. Exodus chapter 33, I want us to read verse number 11a and then jump to verse number 17 to 23. Verse number 11 says, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Mm. Then go to verse number 17. It says, So the Lord said to Moses, I will do also, I will also do this thing that you have spoken for you to have found praise in my sight and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all goodness, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is my place. Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. May the, the Lord bless his word. Amen. The title of my message is simple, and I take it from the text. Show me your glory. Mm. Show me your glory. Now, reading this portion of the scripture, all of you know the story when God appeared to Moses and instructed him to go to deliver the children of Israel and all that they passed through, the Red Sea, parting, and they would walk through the dry path and the dry land into as they were going to the promised land and many great things that God did with Moses. Now speaking about experience we would say that surely Moses had seen God because we see God by the power and the manifestation in the miracles, signs, and wonders that he does. He speaks to us through creation, he speaks to us through uh, healing power in the manifestation of his Holy Spirit. And so when we look at the person of Moses, we would say that surely Moses has seen God. But here comes a man who has seen God and has seen the power of God and having a conversation with God. And he 
talk to God. And God says, I speak to Moses is a man speaks to his friend. And therefore, they have been having a conversation. He knows the voice of God and God knows his voice. God knows when Moses speaks and Moses knows when God speaks. He is familiar with the voice and the sound of God. And God knows his voice as he speaks. And so there has been a communication between Moses and God. And this comes a time that Moses realizes that he needs to know more about God. He needs to go deeper and speak to God more. And therefore Moses confronts and looks at God and says, I want you to show me your glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, Pastor. In other words, Moses is saying, I've talked with you, I've seen your power, I've seen miracles, but I'm not satisfied. I still want to see great things about who you are. I pray that this church would come to a point and to a place where each one of us say, I want more of God. Yes. Amen. I want to see more of God. I want to see the power of God. Amen. Just not little miracles here and there, but you want to see the power of God, the manifestation of His presence. Glory simply means the manifested presence of God, His honor, His majesty, His abundance. His wealth and his weight. Moses was saying, Lord, I want to see you as you are. I want the manifestation of the whole of you. I don't just want to be satisfied where I am, that God has used me mightily and has parted the, 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 the waters and has sent manna from heaven and has fed the children of Israel. I want more of you, Lord. Come on. And that is what we lack. Like. In the church of Christ. We have become familiar with the little miracles and little things that God has done to us, but God has more in store for us. And I pray that our hearts will be burning and thirsty after more of God. In Moses says to God, I want to see your glory. When Moses asked God at all to show him his glory, surely it was something that is bigger beyond anybody else could imagine but Moses himself. Each one of us need to have that cry in our hearts when we pray, when we come together to worship God, when we study the word, when we pray, we need to expect great things from God. Amen. Not just becoming nominal Christians that getting used to what is going on, but having a thirst that we want to see God. That is what the world is looking for. And I know that God has not changed. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. If whatever he did 20 years ago, he can do whatever he did during Jesus' time and disciples, he can still do it because he's a God who never changes. And then God begins to instruct Moses. Many times God instructs us. He gives us a blueprint of what he wants us to follow. And many times we are disturbed. And the Bible says obedience is better than a sacrifice. Amen. So when you obey God, you release the blessings of God upon your life. And so God does not just want Moses to take things simple. Moses says, I want to see your glory, and then he gives instruction. Instruction is very important. And when you follow the instruction of God, you will reach and get to your destiny. But when you miss the instruction of God, you will miss God. And therefore Moses stood there very attentive to hear the instruction of God. One of the things that I like, God begins by telling Moses that no one can see me and live. That is care. And the same God said, he is a friend of Moses. He talks to Moses' face. 
to faith. I believe that God was stretching Moses to the future. He was stretching his faith to the future. Now I want you to understand something. That God is in the business of doing something for you today so that today's miracle can shape your future. Because when you see God today in your life doing something in your family, healing you, protecting you, giving you peace and hope, whatever you ask him is done today, tomorrow you'll be sure that the same God that did it for me yesterday will do it for me today. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Because God has no present, he has no future, but he is in all the present and future. That's why the Bible says it's the Alpha and the Omega. It's the beginning and the end. And in between years, you and I, God knows everything right. that we are going through. You may be passing through a tough time tonight, but I want you to know that God is in the business of doing something new in your life tomorrow. Amen. And so when you go back to what he did for you yesterday, that builds your faith. Hallelujah. And so God begins to instruct Moses and says that I want you to go to a place and I'll show you. Look at verse number 23. I mean to verse 21 to 23. He says, And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by, that I will put you into the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Now let us just look at this scripture in a simple way. What did Moses tell God? I want to see your glory. And I wonder why God would tell Moses that I put you on the rock, by the cleft on the rock, and this is what I'm going to do. When I pass by, I'll put my hand in your arm. There is no way he was going to see him when his hand is covering the eye of Moses. Mm -hmm. There is something that God wants us to understand. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. In Isaiah 2 verse 20 to 21, I like this. It says, in that day a man will cast away his idols or silver and his idols of gold which they made each for himself to worship to the molds and beds, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the crates of the rugged rocks from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty when his earth to shake the earth mightily. Now he's talking about the same rock. He's talking about the cleft of the rock. When you look, read the book of Isaiah, he's talking about how the children of Israel were worshiping idols, they were evil, they did not obey God. Chapter 1, chapter 39 talks about the evils of the children of Israel. And then we see the last chapter is talking about the promised Messiah, his coming, and what he was going to do. I believe that God was putting, uh, wanted Moses to see the future and to see what was going to come in the promise of his son, Jesus Christ. In we come to the question that who is this rock that God told Moses that I want to put you on the rock and when I pass by I put my hand on your eyes on your face and you can only see my back the Bible says in 2 Samuel 22 verse 2 that and he said the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer talking about Jesus. And in Psalms 94, verse 22, but the Lord has been my defense, my God, my rock, or my refuge. In 2 Samuel again, 22, verse, verse 32, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, for who is God except the Lord? Who is a rock except our God? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He is the rock of ages. His name is Jesus. 
Amen. And you remember when Jesus himself took the disciples to the mount, mountain, who appeared? Moses appeared. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. And so when Moses appeared, he looked at Jesus and he said, Oh, this is why God told me that he'll put me by the rock. And in there, he'll put his hand on my face and I can only see his back. That brings me to the power of the cross. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Right. Come on, there Amen. Amen. That brings me to the power of the cross. God was stretching Moses' future and faith to know that he's not only about him, he's not the deliverer. There is one deliverer who will come after him who will deliver all humanity. Amen. Including Isaac and you. Amen. Come Not on. only for the children of Israel, but for the entire world. Come on, Pastor. His name is Jesus. Amen. The son of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The rock of ages. The lily in the valley. The bread of life. Amen. The bright morning star. Amen. The king of kings. Come on. And the Lord of lords. Yes. Come on, Pastor. He will never change. He's the most powerful God. I feel blessed on that. Amen. And then he takes him on the rock and he puts his hand on his face. Then he tells him, when I pass by, you'll only be able to see my back. And I looked at this scripture and said, Lord, I want to understand what mm. you are trying to show Moses here. Mm. And the Lord told me he had to see his back. Because that was a type, that was a picture. God was telling Moses that there is somebody that I'm going to send for the entire humanity. And when he will be going up the mountain, up the hill to be crucified, he will be carrying his cross on his back. And on that cross, everybody will see my grace. Everybody will see my love. Everybody will understand my forgiveness. Because he'll be crucified on that cross. I looked at it and said, Lord, I want to understand more and the power of the cross. And I looked at it and said, hey, God, you are so awesome. And I went back and said, when Jesus was going to be crucified, he carried the cross on his back. And the Bible says, as he was walking by, people were looking and seeing the cross. As he was carrying the cross on his back, going up the hill to be crucified for you and I. Amen. When you see the cross, you have seen God. Yes. When you see the cross, you have seen Jesus. When you see the cross, you have seen the power of God. When you see the cross, you have hope. When you see the cross, you have eternal life. Come on. When you see the cross, you know that your sins have been forgiven. Amen. And that's why God had to put him on the rock. Put him where Jesus is all he encompassing his power and his authority. What the Bible calls and refers to him as the Lord, rock of ages. Mm. Mm. And he says in John 19, 17, he bearing his clothes went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. When he was going there, he carried the cross on his back. And then I look at the power of the cross, I realize that the power of the cross makes Jesus to be seen for us, that we who are sinners become the righteousness of God. Mm. Mm. Come on, Pastor. And so, God was answering Moses' prayer. So it is important sometimes to have a conversation with God through prayer. And when you pray, God will take you through a lesson, a process, takes you through experience for you to know him. That does not mean that he did not do what Moses asked for. He did it. Because Moses wanted to see his glory. After this encounter, there is no way again that Moses ever asked God, I want to see you, Lord. Say amen to that. Amen. And so when he places his hand on the 
face of Moses and then he said, after I do that, then you will see my back. That is very significant. And Jesus, after his resurrection, confronted Thomas and said, I want you to believe me, Thomas. See the hands that they pierced mm. for you and I. That's the glory of God. When you understand that Jesus was crucified and he died for your sins, and because of his crucifixion, you became the child of God, and all that covenant and the blessings that come with knowing who Jesus is gives you the power and the victory. And I looked at the hand of Jesus, and I get a lot of information. Amen. Amen. I like what this man sang many, many years ago. When I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain I count but loss and pour my contempt of all pride. That's a powerful, powerful song that has blessed the hearts of many for many, many years. When I survey the wondrous cross. But let me come back to the head. His hand was pierced because of our sins. His hand lifts us up. The hand of the Lord Jesus. His hand creates. Colossians 1.16 says that everything that we see was created by him and for him. His hand, the Bible says, is not short that he cannot rescue you and I. His hand is not short that he cannot save you. His hand is powerful. His hand has healing. He comes with healing in his hand. And you see how God was stretching Moses' future in the eye to see beyond what he has seen. His hand is purifying. His hands can lead you into prosperity. His hand carries the promises of God. His hand speaks to us. When he stretches his hand, everything stops. Everything stops. When he touches you, there is a blessing, there is power that comes with his hand. His hand blesses. And look at Jesus talking to Thomas and refer to this. He said, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. And reach your hand here and put it to my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered the same to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have, uh, you have believed because blessed are those who do not see, but yet they believe. That means he had to show Thomas because there are people who live by sight. Mm -hmm. Their faith is, I see before I believe. That is the Thomas kind of faith. But it is important for you sometimes to see before you believe. And so Jesus had to put his hand on Moses to see that these hands, these hands will lead you. These hands will lead my people. These hands will heal. These hands will protect. These hands will create. These hands will Preach, lift up. These hands will cover you. My hand is no wonder when he died on the cross, he died with his hands outstretched like this to welcome all of us and say, come and let me be your God and your Lord. Amen. And so to see the glory of God, we must embrace his presence. Mm. We must be willing and ready to see the manifestation of his power. Let the weight of God be seen in us. And you know, God has a gender for all of us. The problem is we don't know who we are. But if we can have that cry like Moses, don't become familiar knowing that what God has done today is not all that he wants to do. He wants to do more with you. Beginning of this year, I've been praying and telling God, God, I want to see you more. I've not seen more of you. I want to see more supernatural miracles happen. 
I want to see the limbs grow. I want to see eyes open. That's what I want to see. Come on. I want to see more God. And he said, I'm ready. If you are willing, I'm ready. And I said, Lord, I'm ready to see more. <coughs> Otherwise, I'll be satisfied because I've seen healing take place. I've seen God raise a man from the dead. I've seen a child come back to life at the point of death. I've seen great things that God has done. I've seen deliverance. And I'm not satisfied. I still want more. And how I pray that this congregation will desire more to see the glory of God. And we cannot see the glory of God when we don't understand the power of the cross. The rock of ages. Let us all put aside the silver and the idols that we can stand on the rock. You know, whatever you place before God takes his place. That becomes your idol. And that's why the book of Isaiah that I read to you talks about idols. Isaiah 2, 20 to 21 say, In that day a man will cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they may eat for himself to worship to the moles and bats, to go to the place of the rocks. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to cry for. That should be our desire. That should be burning in our hearts. That we want to know more of Jesus and the power of the cross. God still wants to save people. God still wants to do miracles. God still wants to multiply his church. God still wants to protect his church. You know that's why he is in the business of doing something spectacular in a congregation like this so that the unbelievers can know you are God. Amen. Amen. We don't need to do things to attract them. We only need to lift up Jesus. That's it. Stand on him. And That's then they'll it. come. Jesus said, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he'll draw men unto himself. And that's my prayer, that the glory of God shall always fill this temple. And when you come and you lift your hands to worship him, the power of God will come down. Supernatural will begin to happen. The glory of God shall fill the house. And his name shall be lifted up. Amen. That's what we are looking for. Hmm. That's what we are praying for. And may God grant it to this church. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name that's above every name. Our desire tonight is to see your glory. Help us to understand the power in the cross. Lord God, we want to see more of the move of the Holy Spirit in our worship. God, lift up this church to change this community, to change the world. Bless us together. We are here saying, here we are ready, Lord. We want to see you. And the manifestation of your presence and your power. May you grant it to us. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. And all the saints say, Amen. 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 Show me your glory. God will show us his glory. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you so much. We love you with the love of God. And I want you to know what we do in our church. We have been praying for you. We have people who are praying for you for sin. And we have been praying for this church ever since. But I want to affirm to you that our prayers for you will continue until Jesus comes. The Lord bless you so much. Did this bless anybody tonight? Amen. Amen. I spoke in the southern accent. I hope you understood. <laughs> southern accent. <laughs>
<laughs> That's all in Africa. <laughs> Guys, the very first time we were able to send any funds was last year to help this ministry. Those funds totaled $250. This year, we are presenting Future Life Christian Ministries with a check for $1,000. Now, that would not be possible without what you do in this church every week. Amen. You've seen the video. You've met the man. You, you, if you haven't, you'll meet his wife. She's prettier than, she, than he is. <laughs> she has a beautiful spirit. This is my brother. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. We have been friends for a long time. You minister to this church. You minister to these people that you do not know that you will maybe even never meet. But this gift tonight is going to help a life be saved. It's going to change a child's future. It's going to allow a little girl not to have to live in a way that has become all too common in the streets of Siaya. It's going to give her meaning and dignity. It's going to help his wife as she ministers to these children, to these older people with AIDS, to be able to give them comfort and peace and to pray over them and to bless them because you have made this possible with your heart and with your giving. I can say thank you a thousand times, but it will not compare with that soul that will be in heaven because of this work we have done here today. Pastor, in Swahili, I want you to bless my people. In the language of Swahili, Nasema ya kwamba Mungu awabariki. Awaonekanie. Mkitoka wabariki. Mkiingia wabariki. Chochote mmeweka mkono wenu ibarikiwe katika jina la Bwana, la Mwana, na Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. 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 This is what I say. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. The Lord bless you when you go out. Lord bless you when you come in. The Lord bless whatever you lay your hands to do. May you be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's what I say next week. <laughs> Guys, before we wrap up tonight, I, I, know my, I know my pastor. I know my friend. You see that, that City Gate has been going on for a while. Pastor Isaac will always call City Gate his church. My father told me that. I'm saying this to you tonight. I don't know what you've got going on in your heart, in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. But if you need prayer tonight, if you want prayer tonight, I don't want to just blow past this. I believe what that man said. How many of you believe it? Amen. How many of you truly, I mean, honest, honestly and earnestly, how many of you would really like to see God? I, I mean, really, I mean, how many of you would like to see that? Are you willing to do what it's going to take to see that? It's going to have to take asking. It's going to have to pray and let God allow his Holy Spirit to move in you and through you. Do you realize what you're asking for? Because I don't know if you really have fathomed the depth of your request. Because when you ask God for something and he grants your request, it may not be the way that you thought it was going to come. Ask Robert. Ask Jeff. Ask Trey. Either one of them. Ask me. Ask Charlie. You ever think you'd be working with missionaries, Charlie? 
I'm just saying. April, Angie, do y'all think you'd be praising worship leaders one day? I'm just saying. Trey, do you ever think you'd be a deacon? But here we are. Not because we're good, but because God's good. And because he knows our future. So if we trust him, let it rest in his hand. He's going to work it out. No matter what's going on in your life. If you want prayer tonight, we're going to pray with you. If you want prayer tonight, I'm not trying to make a spectacle of this. I'm not trying to be funny. Robert, if you wouldn't mind, turn this camera off because I don't want this going on tonight. If there's anybody that wants prayer tonight, I want you to come up. If you want prayer for your mind, your body, your finances, whatever's going on, your relationship, I don't care. It doesn't matter. If you want to do it, I want you to do it.